Hey everyone, it's Aradna. You know those books that you constantly go back to and you need a pick-me-up or a comfort type of thing? I call those the nostalgia rereads. For me, they are books from my childhood and teen years. And even though I know how they end, or maybe because I know how they end, I like to go back to them and read them because they remind me of a simpler time, I guess. It just, it's, the word I want to use is comforting, but it's not exactly comforting, it's just, well I guess it is, it's reassuring. These books, in hindsight, may not be the best written books or the most unproblematic books, but they came to me when they needed them the most. They remind me of why I love reading, they remind me of why I want to write. So I don't own, I don't have all the books on me, so we'll <laughs> see how this goes. Okay, we're gonna start probably the most popular of the books. I have the entire box set of the Chronicles of Narnia. Now, I read these books when I was a teenager, so when I was in secondary school, I came across them. I think I borrowed them from the library first, or, um, and then I remember enjoying the story, I found it really magical. It has very strong Christian imagery, that is true, but at the time all I could see draw were parallels to my own faith. So they were, it was like, it was like being seen in a way that you can believe in something bigger than yourself. And C.S. Lewis's writing actually influences a bit of my own writing style because he's got a very meandering and whimsical type of way of writing. I know I've been influenced by the little bit of a long-winded sentence, the the way he describes things, the way he has a bit of a conversational style and some of my writing has been influenced. I've used influence but yes that's the case, it has been influenced by his writing. So I am probably in the smaller bracket of enjoying the movie adaptations of these books. I'm looking forward to the TV so show that's gonna be that I've heard is in production but yeah so the I go back to these books every once in a while just for it feels like a warm hug like you're going home I think before Harry Potter came out these were the books that really brought me magic so yeah I really still love them the next series is um, what Katie Did by Susan M. Coolidge. These books, if you can see, are very, very ratty tatty type of books because they were actually, if I'm not wrong, they were my mom's copies. I got them from my grandmother's house and nobody was reading them, so um, my grandmother said I could keep them. And they are, okay, I will be honest. In, over the years, I realized they can be a little preachy, they can be a little dry, but there's just something about the Carr siblings that I really enjoy. There's something about the background romance in the third book that I really enjoy, and so I constantly go back and just skim read them, go to my favorite parts, um, which is mostly the parts with either the um, the sisters, Katie and Clover, or the friendship between Katie and Polly in the third book, and the little bit of slow burn romance between Katie and Polly's brother in the third book. And I um, don't think there have any, any been any screen adaptations. If they have, I haven't found them, and I would want to watch them. But yeah, I actually don't hear a lot of people talking about these books. I really enjoy them. I, it's like, it's like, 
yeah, it's preachy, it's long-winded, it's very, very white, <laughs> but it's simple, straightforward, you know Katie at the end of the day is going to get her happy ending and it is reassuring just to see close-knit family and an oldest sister that learns and grows and loves her siblings a lot. I wasn't gonna include this next book, this next series in this video and then I saw that I had them here with me and I haven't read them in a very long time but this is Patricia C. Wade's Dealing with Dragon series. I own all four books but one of them has gone missing. It, it, either in the move when my parents moved um, in Singapore or when my books were sent from Singapore to Malaysia. I am quite sad by that because it took me a very long time to hunt them down in the first place. I first read these books when I was about 11 when I was visiting my cousin in Jakarta. She had the whole series and I, within the span of two weeks, I think, I finished all four books and it was dragons and magic and a princess that runs away from home and gets herself kidnapped and forms a friendship with the dragon that kidnaps her and it was just really really fun. She was probably one of the first take charge princesses I remember reading about and the entire world and then the romance in the second book and the friendship between the dragon and the princess and then the fact that the fourth book like it just it built in the world you don't you don't lose sight of the fact that Simarine, I think her name is Simarine, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but the princess, you don't lose her as your strong lead, but you get characters around her that grow as well, and it was just a lot of fun to read. I'm actually very tempted to do a reread now, so I'm very glad that this video brought, reminded me that I own them, but yeah. The next book I actually don't own. I borrowed it from the library a lot over the years, even up to my university years, but the first time I read it was when my cousin, I borrow a lot of books from my cousins, so the first time I read it was when my cousin was studying in Singapore and she had a copy on her shelves and she let me borrow it. It was um, A Tale of Time City by Diane Wine Jones, I think that's how you pronounce her name. She's the author of Howl's Moving Castle, which I also enjoyed, but I've only read that about once. I do want to do a reread. I found an audiobook on YouTube that I am trying to make my way through, but I am not very good with audiobooks, I'm realizing. But yeah, okay, so A Tale of Time City is more middle grade than young adult and it's about this young girl who's about 12 or 13 who gets uh, kidnapped when she is being moved from her home in London to the countryside during the evacuations during World War II and the, to the people who kidnap her are two other young boys and they realize shortly after taking her that they've taken the wrong girl and they take her to this place called time city which is the center of time basically from here people move to different time time zones to correct the trajectory of history and because they've taken her out of the time or because or because someone else with the same name I don't really remember the particulars but time is falling apart around them and the three of them take it on themselves to try and correct everything and I remember when I first read the book that at the end of it I was just like flipping back and going oh she set this up here and she set this up here and it was the way the pieces came together were amazing and it still awes me to this, to this day which is why I've constantly gone back and read the book. I think the last time I read it was about three years ago while I was in New Zealand. I borrowed it from the library. I just really, really enjoy this world. It was a very different different type of story. It, the world was built really well. The characters were really fun. Um, 
and there was this one thing though about this book that just frustrates me to no end there's this mention of this food pie thing that sounds amazing but in the book they never tell you how they make it because it's made by a machine and I'm just sitting here going but I want to have it and as a foodie that's frustrating but you know what can you do right now, this one in recent years I've discovered some problematic aspects of the book I suppose and I've discovered that the author is not the greatest person I or was not the greatest person I actually don't know if she's still around I know her son has taken over writing the series there are a lot of books I own the first few my aunt took me out once when I was going through a bit of a reading slump she took me to the secondhand bookstore and then she she told me about the series and it was about dragons and it was this little bit of sci-fi and I sort of fell in love with the world the world building was really good the characters at the time were exactly the type of characters I needed to get through my school to make go out and make new friends they were encouraging it was it was it was a world I could get lost in I have the first I think 10 books and but I haven't been reading the recent ones because I haven't enjoyed them I tried one of them this is the Dragon Riders of Pearl Pern Dragon Riders of Pern series by Anne McCaffrey I enjoy I think the first few books the most and then there are some books that are set in the beginning of the establishment of their colony that are also really interesting. The first few books, the ones that are set later, are more fantasy-ish because you'd, you've, um, you're in a world where they've sort of forgotten their beginnings but the earlier ones that explain things show you how they set up and how they learned all of the things and those are more sci-fi oriented they're very very interesting in the sense that these dragons are bred and not born and they connect with their riders mentally and well one thing you discover th during the course of the book is that they can travel to through they can travel through time they can blink from one place to another so they can sort of teleport and they can teleport to a little bit in the future and a little bit in the past and the characters themselves some of them in hindsight a little bit problematic but as a whole the world is just fascinating and so I do go back to it every now and then just to read scenes that I know I enjoy read about characters I know I love and well dragons who doesn't love dragons right now the last series I want to talk about I thought I had the books here with me but I think I've left them in my mom's house now this series also I the first time I read a book from this series was when I was visiting my grandmother and my mom had a copy on her old shelves she says it wasn't her book it might have been one of her sisters but I remember reading it and being I want to know how this story started and it was they can be read in a way as standalones because it this is the um, Shally School series by Eleanor M. Brent Eyer it's a series about a boarding school in Austria and this is set before World War II some of the books take place during World War II so you have the characters going away from Austria, they're, sort of, they're escaping Austria, then you have the knowledge that some of them have lost people, you have the knowledge that some of them some of them were in concentration camps and it was really really fascinating because it's all in the background but the school itself, I remember the first time I read this series thinking I want to go to a boarding school just because of this series. It was, it was about sisterhood, it was about 
friendship, it was about learning about yourself and finding strength in yourself, it was about languages, it was about having fun and growing up and it was just a very very fun read. I own about 13 of the books, I think maybe less. There are about 62 books in the series and I'm still trying to track them all down. I know it's very white, it's very Eurocentric, but it's just a series that I really enjoyed. It made me in appreciate my life more. It made me fall in love with school and learning. It made me fall in love with language. The main character in the first few books grows up to be an author. Then you see her life, you see her children go to school, and it was just a world that was ours, but at the same time it was removed from the one I grew up in, so it was, it was a nice feeling, and I want to go back to that sometimes. <laughs> now, there are other books that I do enjoy nostalgia rereading but I don't do them as often so maybe I'll make a separate video for sort of books I look back on fondly. We'll see how it goes. In the meantime, do you have any nostalgia rereads? Books that you enjoy even though in hindsight they weren't the greatest? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> Until next time.